everyone. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, my name is Xiao Yilu. I come from the Ohio State University. So uh, first of all, uh, I apologize that my co-presenter, Dr. DK Panda, could not come uh, because of his personal constraints at the last minute. So I will take, the, take, take care of the whole presentation. So today I'm going to uh, present uh, something we did to build the efficient HPC cloud with MRPC2, MPI library, and OpenStack over SRV-enabled InfiniBand clusters. So these days, cloud computing and the virtualization they are became, becoming so important for the business uh, to, so to save, your, save your money, save your cost, and share the resources efficiently. So this, for example, the IDC forecasts that the worldwide public ID cloud services uh, spent near to like $108 billion by this year. So if we take a look at the technology side, to like what kind of driving factors or driving technologies for building uh, HPC clouds. We see that a uh, lot of kind of uh, exciting hardware trends actually uh, being used in the cloud architecture. For example, uh, multi-core, many core accelerators, large memory nodes, NVRAN, SSD, uh, those kind of things. And there are two important technology trends uh, it's being uh, widely used these days. Uh, it's one is the RDMA enabled technology uh, in, uh, networking, for example, InfiniBand and the Rocky. The second one is like a single root IO virtualization. So this will give you like a near native performance. Let me briefly uh, give an introduction what SRV does. Okay. So earlier, when you when you're trying to like uh, do networking uh, or network uh, leak kind of virtualization, you typically utilize uh, backend and, so, and, the, and the front end kind of driver based solutions. So your packet will go back and forth, and then there's a lot of uh, overhead involved there. And then uh, these days, people start using SRV technologies because it's providing a lot of new opportunities to design efficient communication schemes. Okay, the basic idea of SRV is that uh, it allows the physical functions or your PCI device to represent itself as multiple fault functions, and that each of these fault functions can be dedicatedly mapped to the uh, each guest uh, guest virtual machine. Okay. And each of these virtual machine can use this uh, uh, virtual function like uh, dedicatedly, okay? Just like you own this, virtual, uh, this uh, network card by yourself. So in this way, you can uh, directly uh, achieve very good performance. This works with both uh, high performance internet as well as InfiniBand. So to build the efficient HPC cloud, we think that the high performance uh, networking, such as InfiniBand, Rocky, iWarp, and uh, the SRV give you a lot of chance. For example, from performance perspective, uh, these days the InfiniBand card can give you like a few microseconds to transfer the data between the nodes. And the, the, the most advanced HDR card for InfiniBand can give you like 100, 200 Gbps per second bandwidth. That's very high performance. And one, another important thing is this type of network typically can give you the RDMA kind of uh, uh, feature. So you can access remote memory directly just like ex extending your DMA uh, concept to remote site. So all of this, if we put together, we are trying to ask how to build HPC clouds with SRV and InfiniBand to deliver the optimal performance. What kind of challenges, what kind of problems are there still? So we, we just summarize what uh, the challenges we, we, are, we think is important and that we are trying to resolve them uh, the, during our work. So the first important thing is how to uh, support virtual machine and the containers, because these days both virtual machine or hypervisor-based uh, solutions and the container-based solutions are becoming so popular for building uh, cloud. So then we, want, we are trying to see how to design efficient stack on top of this kind of environment, let's say KVN, Docker, or Singularity, or something else. And then from communication side, there are a lot, there are a lot of uh, available communication schemes or channels, mechanisms you can utilize in the cloud. SRV is just one of the, one of the example, and actually there's also other kind of uh, technique you can use. For example, Ivishman, which, uh, which means inter-VM shared memory. So you can do shared memory-based communication between the VMs, which are co-located in the same host. And also IPC shaman and the CMA. CMA is a kernel-assisted data copy. It means that you can copy the data from one process to another process directly. Okay, this kind of zero copy uh, scheme you can utilize. And another thing is like a locality. Okay, how you detect if you run your MPI jobs, if you run your parallel programs on a lot of virtual, virtual machines or 
containers. So you have to aware that where your process is running, okay? For example, if I run in this, in this virtual machine, you're run, you running another one, but we are actually co-locating the same host, then we probably can utilize better channel rather than go through network, right? So then you can get a better performance for your communication. And uh, some other things like scalability, collective, balancing, internal, internal communication, and the new malware. So these days, because we can bind virtual machine or container to different cores, so they may belong to different new domain. Okay, then your communication should aware that. Okay, so that you can you can you can uh, avoid some new more effect. And the kind of and another thing like fault tolerance support, SRV is good, but the, the, the migration is not supported yet. Like live, especially live migration. So how we can achieve that? Okay, because that's important for build cloud, right? And then some other things like how to co-design with uh, cloud systems like OpenStack and learn kind of uh, things. So we just list something of uh, some important challenges here. The red ones is the ones or the challenges we are trying, I'm trying to present our solutions to solve them. So we, de we desire different approaches to uh, solve these challenges and we summarize to five of them, like how to design efficient virtualization of weird MPI library with SRV and Ivishman. So it can run standalone manner or you can also run with uh, OpenStack. Second thing is, like I said, how to do the virtual machine migration with SRV device. That's a big challenge is currently facing in the community. And uh, how you can do efficient communication on top of a container environment. Here we, sh we uh, show two examples. One is Docker, another one is uh, Singularity. The fourth thing is, this days another kind of virtualization scheme or, or uh, like paradigms is also being uh, widely used in the uh, community. We call it nested fertilization. Actually, this is not something new. We are we, we're using them like a, like a daily manner because sometimes we run container on top of virtual machine. We, we call it nested fertilization. Because here you have like a two layer of uh, environment isolation kind of things. So that what kind of performance uh, actually or what kind of bottlenecks are there we are, we are trying to solve. And the, and the last thing is, uh, because we are trying to do build, build HPC cloud, so in HPC stack, people typically use what? They're they are, they are using SNRN or PBS kind of uh, resource manager or scheduler. Now the question is, SNRN doesn't support any virtualization or virtual machine management kind of things. Then how we can uh, design something to, to expand the SNRN scope to like a, a cloud for cloud kind of environment? And another thing is, can SNRN work with OpenStack? So this kind of overview, what kind of approaches? I just give, like, first give this high level uh, summary. So before I go into detail, I just want to quickly introduce what is MRP2 because I keep talking MRP2, MRP2 MPI library. So MRP2 actually is an open source library for, uh, build, for uh, like, uh, open source MPI library um, running on top of InfiniBand, OmniPass, Ethernet, iWarp, or Rocky, or this kind of networks. It has been in the community for more than 50 years already. So uh, we have a lot of different versions. We support MPI, we support MPI plus PGAS, we support MPI plus GPU direct RDMA. We support cloud. Okay, and also this cloud, uh, or some of, my, some of my talk, uh, in this some of the work in this presentation actually already public available uh, in the MWP2 vert library. And uh, energy aware MPI, we also support. So this library has been used uh, by uh, like almost 3,000 of organizations across the world, as long as you have these high performance networks. You, uh, many people actually use our library. For example, the number one supercomputer in the world actually using our library to, uh, to get the high perform get the performance. So today's talk, we highly focus on this one. Uh, this is the MRP2 word in the whole MRP2 software family. This is a high performance and scalable MPI for hypervisor and container-based HPC cloud. So uh, if, you, if you want to show that what the challenges addressed so far in this library is that this is your application, this is your like MPI, PGAS, or open, MPI plus MP kind of program models to develop your applications. And then in this layer, we call that the resource management layer or cl uh, for cloud computing. So we will say that we, are, we list some examples like Nova, Heat, and Snurl. And the underneath is the important thing is communication IO libraries. So that's why we are trying to, uh, we are trying to present some concrete designs for each of these box. So the first thing is, how to design SRV and Ivishman aware MPI library so that you can uh, achieve near native performance. So this figure actually uh, give a high level like uh, architecture what we did, okay? So the 
the yellow box is the SR refer to function. So you can, you can directly use the VF driver and then you can communicate through this line between two MPI process or any two process in different virtual machines, okay? But problem is, SRV gives you near latent performance for inter internal point-to-point -point communication, but the problem, like I said, if your two process are actually co-located in the same house, even though they may be in different virtual machines, then if you still go through SRV, which may not give you the best performance. The reason is that because in many HPC uh, applications or HPC uh, middleware, typically people use shared memory backed communication to improve the performance rather than you go through loop back. So that's why we are trying to bring Ivishman into the picture so that we, we can, we can uh, use the Ivishman based mechanism to in, in accelerate your communication in this type of environment. But the problem, the challenge is how you can detect the locality efficiently and in a scalable manner, and how you can coordinate the communication paths internally. So we, with this, we design some uh, high efficient locality detection mechanism and the communication coordina coordinator inside our MPI library. So you, all these de pass detection, pass optimizations, and the pass selections will, will be uh, automatically done by our library. So when you run your MPI jobs inside virtual machine environment, as long as you have this SRV device, you should be able to get the near latent performance. With this, let me uh, give, uh, and, the, and one more thing I want to uh, highlight is that, so for example, when we run these things, people may say that, okay, it's hard to configure SRV or Ivishman uh, in the cloud, because you, you, need, you need to like, set it up instance by instance, right? And then the good, the good news is OpenStack give, give a very good solution to management those kind of devices. So we, what we did is we, we are trying to extend Nova to support Ivishman configuration so that the virtual machine can, uh, when, when we launch virtual machine, we will automatically assign the Ivishman device on top of it so you can uh, easily uh, get the environment, the desired environment to run HPC applications on top of it. With this, let's, let, let's take a look at the performance. We are keeping talking, we want to achieve good performance, right? So if you see the three bars, the green one is you run default MPI applications on top of SRV, default SRV scheme, okay? You see that it's good. In, most, in many cases, it's it almost close to the native, but it's not the best. It's good, but not the best. Okay, so the, 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 the yellow bar is the one we optimized. So like we, if, we, if we detect that the pass can be optimized, then we will choose the better pass. And then with that, we see that we can, eat, we can make, make the performance even closer to the native. Like the maximal, uh, overlap, uh, maximal overhead for spec MPA uh, benchmark, we, we see around less than 10% overhead, okay? That's for the default, uh, that's, that's what you have done for MPI library to make it aware of uh, virtual machine environment. Now the second thing is, now, good, you have SRV, which gives you near native performance for internal communication, but the problem is if you want to do the live migration with our SRV, for example, this is the virtual machine. You do LSPCI, you see this virtual function. And then you, you run libvirt command saying that I want to migrate this virtual, virtual machine from one node to the other, and then immediately they fail, saying that the, virtual, the, like, the request operation is not valid because there's some device which is not, uh, I mean, migration is not supported. You, so you cannot do any migration stuffs with SRV. That's a big, big bo barrier to use SRV in the cloud environment. And how to solve that, right? This is a big question. And then what we did is we first did a survey saying that, okay, what kind of existing solutions or what kind of existing research has been done in the community, whether we can use that or not. Okay, we, we, we searched a lot of uh, papers. This is like a six of them like published in top tier conference. Okay, they're good. They did a lot of work, make it, make, make it happen. But the problem is, if we see like, uh, whether you need to modify guest OS, whether you need to modify the driver, whether you need to modify the hypervisor. We see that none of them can run like, uh, without any, mo any modifications to the existing stuffs. Okay, this means what? This means your solution is not a generic. It, it, it may lock into some fender driver, some fender device, some guest, OS some, t some version of hypervisor. If you want to build the HPC cloud, you cannot assume that the cloud will always give you this type of environment, right? It may be all kinds of vendors, device, drivers, guest OS versions, hypervisor will be there. 
then the real challenge is not just make it work. The real challenge is how to design a solution which is hypervisor independent and the driver independent so that your solution will be generic and run anywhere. This seems very challenging and impossible, right? But we did it. So, but we did it with some kind of assumption. So we assumed that in many HPC uh, uh, cloud environment, because MPA is like a standard solution to do the complications, okay? Then we are thinking that whether these things can be done in the MPI layer. Actually, it's possible. So that's what we did in, the, in, in our library. Okay, the basic idea is that if the, the major problem for SRV migration is because the SRV device, but, right? Then the, the, law for, the, the naive idea is that can we like first do hot plug or hot unplug of SRV device before you do migration? And then after you, after you migrate to destination host, we can hot, hot plug the device again. With that, yes, it sounds, seems very straightforward, but the problem is how you can handle the traffic in the application, okay? So what we did, we proposed some kind of uh, controller outside the, uh, the, the, the virtual machine so we can like, uh, get your request of migration. And then we designed some uh, parallel uh, modulars to trigger the, to, to like, transfer this type of single loss into the virtual machines. And then inside the virtual machine, our MPI library actually can will detect this kind of single loss through the Eichmann uh, channel. Actually, Eichmann just one channel we use to transfer single loss. You can use other channels as well. And then inside our MPI library, if we detect that you're trying to, you're trying to migrate your virtual machine, okay? And then we will, we will like uh, suspend the order, uh, we will first drain all the uh, on the flying traffics and then suspend the complication, okay? And then I will let the controller know that, okay, now, now it's safe to migrate. And the controller will just uh, hot unplug the devices and then migrate to the station host and then hot plug again. And then the, give another signal saying that now you can, you can resume. Once the MPI library de detected the, the resume signals, and then it will re-establish connections. Because here we're talking about infinite band, so you probably can think of a lot of states you need to handle properly. For example, EPs, all kind of contexts, endpoints, queues, all those information you need to handle properly so that you can make it happen. That's the big, broad idea we did in our, uh, in our work. With that, we actually can run with any kind of uh, hypervisor, any kind of drivers, right? So that's the, we think that's the smart way to do it. Now let's take a look at the performance. Once we did it, how much impact, or how much performance overhead or how much impact on the applications. Before that, we, let's first take a look at the migration, migration uh, time. So there's three schemes we evaluate. One is we, we migrate through TCP IP, we migrate through IPOV protocol, or we migrate through RDMA. Of course, through RDMA is the best solution to achieve the best performance for migration. And then this, this, this graph shows that because we did a lot of parallelism inside our controllers, so we are, we, we, our proposed migration framework can much faster than if you migrate the virtual machines one by one in a sequential manner. So the best case, we can, we can reduce like half of the time. That's the, that's the, that's the migration, migration time. Now let's take a look at if you run some application inside the virtual machines, what happens? So we designed multiple schemes, actually. So the PE means that we design all kinds of migration detection, those kind of things inside the pr progress engine. And multi-thread, MT means multi-thread. So we have a migration thread based solution. So we, we bring some migration uh, thread inside our, our library to detect those kind of events and then trying to overlap the complication and the migration phase. So we see that this is the benchmark. This benchmark is kind of continuous through the complication, okay? So here we see the, this gap is because of the downtime of the migration phase. Uh, here, because they always do a complication, though there is no too much time to help, to, to, to let the library do the overlap, okay? The reason is because the SRV device is not there yet, is, is getting hot unplugged, so you, the complication has to be uh, suspended. But if it see some real applications, so the real applications, because in the, they typically have a lot of competitions, right? And then with that, our MP, M, uh, migration thread-based solutions can almost totally overlapped with the migration phase because your competition can still going on. There's a only very small overhead when the final life migration uh, downtime. Okay, that overhead is still there, but it's almost very close to the no migration performance. Okay, for example, the, 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 the block one and the yellow one. That's the key ideas of the uh, overlapping design in our library. 
Okay, that's something we uh, we are talking about the how to support the SRV uh, migration on top of SRV uh, device. And the next thing is about container. So, because container give you very lightweight uh, virtualization solution. For example, container you, you can share the host kernel so that your application can run with the lightweight uh, virtualization layer. This gives a lot of benefits, especially for the performance. Okay, that's why these days people are trying to use container environment. The, now let's take a look. What kind of problems there? Okay, the left side is the one I ask students to say. I'm saying, you try, can you give me some numbers? If you run MPI or HP application on top of a container environment, is there any opportunities to do some work? They give me this finger, this me this graph. Say me, there's no. The, the performance looks very similar, right? There's no, there's no too much opportunities to optimize. And then I said, can you, can you continue to do something further? And then he did something like this. If we run this native, this native performance, run MPI on top of native environment, and run one container per node, the, the performance looks exactly the same. It's very, very similar, just like this case. And then I said, can you try like two containers or more containers? And then interestingly, when he tried two containers, it's kind of like this. Not, not, more than how many times? Like three times. And then four, keep, keep going up. And then now means what? Means th there's some kind of bottlenecks inside this environment, okay? And then we said why, okay? What happens is actually for the native environment, because your two MPI process or, a, or process inside the same kernel, you can use kernel assisted copy. Like I said earlier, the CMA channel, which is sitting here, okay? That's give you very good performance because that's zero copy uh, scheme. But the problem is when you go into different containers because of the isolation, you cannot see each other. So that's why you cannot, do, you cannot use CMA by default, okay? And also there's no locality information. You don't know we are in the same host actually, okay? So that's why we did something like uh, we detect this kind of information and then we can easily we can smartly select one of these channels, either CMA or shared memory or HCA, so that we can automatically optimize your communication uh, passes. With that, let, let, let's, see the, let's see the performance again. Okay, the left, left side is the last benchmark. Okay, we see that the, ye the, the green one is the default scheme. The yellow one is the one we proposed. So we can, you, you, can, you can smartly select the best pass. We can reduce the time to like 11%, like, uh, uh, okay? And then this, this example we talked earlier. This, yellow, this green bar is the one, by default, you can, you can get it from, uh, with Docker environment. But that's not efficient, right? Obviously. And then with our design, we can reduce the time to 70% so that you can achieve near latent performance, no matter how many containers you want to run on the same node. Okay? This is about Docker. And then in the HPC community, actually, people trying to, to, to propose some different solutions for, for container. There's one called uh, Singularity. So we, we run our design on top of Singularity environment we, where we can achieve near, also like near native performance, less than 10% overhead for point-to-point for -point latency and bandwidth, be cast or reduce. So be cast or reduce is widely used in deep learning workloads. So this, this means that it, it has potential to improve deep learning application as well. So this MPB and the graph founder are also less than 10% of overhead with our design. That's very impressive numbers we got. Okay, now let's take a look at the uh, uh, nested virtualization environment. So like I said, typically nested virtualization actually give some kind of uh, benefits. The first thing is that, for example, you, can, you, you want to uh, encapsulate or you want to wrap your application, your dependencies in the container or in your Docker images, right? You, you, and then you, 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 you can share it with your uh, colleagues easily. But the, the resource provider may give you what? It may give you virtual machines to run it. And then that's the, this slide shows, this is the typical scenarios, okay? Let's say I'm a developer of application. I developed some image, like a Docker images and then I push to the uh, doc, Docker uh, repo. And then I, I told that uh, the, the image is there, then the users can share it, and you can whatever you can, you just do, do a git Docker pool, and then you can use it in your environment, right? And then some users, they may get the resources from Amazon Cloud or some other clouds, and then 
actually is like a virtual machine environment. And then they, they just do a Docker pool and they get the, those images and they run on that environment, right? And then in that case, it's like a less state virtualization, exactly. Right? During your runtime, your application run inside Docker and then run inside the virtual machines. Okay? So this is very, very common, I believe, in the future uh, cloud deployments. Now let's see what kind of problem here if you run applications inside the nested virtualized environment. The first thing, the first thing, first important thing we see is that there's lot the, the communication channels or communication paths becomes even complicated. For example, let's say if your virtual machine or your container was binded by to some course or some NUMA domain, then let's say for, for example you have you have, you have so many cores and then each core you run one process. Let's say if this process communicates with this one, okay? Then this means what? This means inter-container, inter-VM communication pass. This is, the, this is the pass one. And then probably because this is part of jobs, right? You, you may communicate with any pair. Let's say, for example, this guy, core, the, the, pro, the process sitting on the core 13, it may communicate with the guy who's sitting in the core 14. Then, then this one is what? This one is inter-container communication. Right? And then if we see part three, part three is code six complicated is code 12. This will go through the, across the socket. Okay, this may be another pass available or another pass in your application. And then there's a pass four as well. So you may complicate it with some process in another node. This will be called internal complication. So at least your complicated pass can belong to these four categories. Then how to optimize it, right? Okay, so earlier I mentioned about what? I mentioned about one, t one layer based uh, optimizations, right? Or earlier design just for either you run in pure virtual machine environment or pure container environment. And then when we think about this environment, we are thinking that whether our earlier design is still valid or not. And then we asked uh, some students to try some experiments, saying that, okay, can you run? Can you take the earlier design we published in SPP last year? Can you try earlier design on this elastic fertilizer environment? See what happens, what kind of performance you can get. But interestingly, what we see that even you have good design for one layer environment, but if you run in this elastic fertilizer environment, still you see a big gap, around 2x or 3x performance degradation. So which means what? Which means the earlier design cannot work efficiently. It means you have to do something more, okay? So there's some challenges that I want to uh, uh, highlight. So first thing is how to further reduce the performance overhead, okay? Not only reduce one layer, you, you have to across layers. You have to reduce the communication time across layers, especially this two-layer environment. And what kind of impacts of different VM or container placement schemes? Because people have the freedom to place their uh, containers on this core, that core, or different sockets, or core sockets, those kind of things. And then can we propose some design which can adapt these different uh, placement schemes and to deliver the near native performance for nested fertilization environments? Okay, so this is some design we, well, we published in VEE this year. So uh, like I said, this is the environment that we are, we are targeting. Uh, so we, we propose some uh, more, com more components in so inside our, our library. So we first call it like a container locality detection. So this one layer, first detect where, where I am in the container layer. And then VM locality detector is kind of detect which VM I'm actually running. And then we will like do a combine of this two layer detection. And then not only that, we also propose some like two layer NUMA or complication coordinator so that we know that if we are sitting in the same NUMA, what kind of channel we should use. And if we sit in different, different NUMA nodes, then what kind of complication channel we should use. We have more details in our paper and all, all kind of details and the trade-offs among, among these things. So please feel free to take a look. Now let's take a look at the numbers. These are some interesting numbers I want to say. So first, let's take a look at intra socket. Let's say your Oreo process inside one socket, but still two layers, okay? So the one layer has similar performance to default, which means not good. And then compared to one layer, our two layer design can deliver up to almost 200 performance improvement for, lat for latency and bandwidth. The red one is the native with CMA enabled. So that's the best. We cannot achieve that because 
you, with that, you have to run your process in the same kernel. But if we disable CMA, we see the black one, which is exactly similar to our two-layer designs. That's the best you can achieve inside a nested fertilizer environment. So which means we already touched the peak. Okay, so that's the inter-socket. For inter-socket, similarly, we see that the two-layer has a near native performance, near native performance for small, small message, but some overhead on large messages, okay? And uh, now let's take a look at the uh, performance for the application level. So we run Graph 500 and, and NAS, Class D. So we, we compare with default one-layer and two-layer design. As we can see, this is like 256 process across uh, 16 nodes. Uh, we see that compared with the native or uh, default, the enhanced, uh, compared with default, the enhanced hybrid design can uh, reduce the time up to 16% or 10%. And then compared with one layer, we can uh, reduce the time uh, to like uh, reduce up to 12% uh, and 6% of the uh, performance, uh, of the uh, excluding time. Okay, so the last story is like I said, so in HPC, in HPC uh, stack, there are a lot of uh, work or a lot of uh, kind of requirement on the scheduler part, especially for SNRN or OpenPBS or TalkU. Now that people may say that if we want to design something on top of uh, that, that with cloud environment, what we can do, okay? The first thing is we, the reason I, I, we talked earlier, right, like SRV, Avishman, virtual machine isolation, deploy, deployment, all, all those kind of things is important, but the problem is we cannot do those kind of management and isolation by MPI library, because in MPI library, we only see some local picture, not a global one. However, SNRN or OpenStack, they are sitting like uh, in the management layer or in, 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 sitting in the, uh, like, uh, in, the, in the infrastructure layer, right? They actually have the global pictures of how resources get allocated, how processes get scheduled. So in that case, we are thinking that if we can extend SNR to management, to manage SRV and management devices as well as VM deployment, those kind of things, then it will make our MPI library much easier, right? So those kind of information can handle, those kind of management can handle by SNR, and then we can get the information from there. Now let's see what we did. So SNR has a very good architecture. There's a one, uh, uh, they have a, like a plugin based architecture. You, there's a one scheme, uh, one mechanism called Spunk. So if you implement some uh, Spunk functions, we can, you can easily extend the SNR fun functionalities. So we broadly, we designed three uh, components in the Spunk plugin architecture. One is load Spunk. So we can, uh, uh, when load Spunk, we, we designed the VM config reader. So this reader will uh, register all VM configuration options to the environment so that when uh, the job gets launched, we can get this information from the environment. And then when, we la what, when this, uh, the second component is VM launcher, so it's trying to uh, deploy the virtual machines uh, or to launch the virtual machines to run your MPI jobs there. So uh, we have some kind of mechanisms to like exclusively allocate the uh, first function and uh, to uh, like assign the, uh, to isolate the Avishman uh, regions. The last one is VM uh, reclaimer in when the job, when the job finished, this, this component will tear down all the VMs and the reclaim all the resources being used in this job. This is one thing. But after we did this, we found that, okay, some of the com functionalities or some of the stuff is already done by OpenStack. Why we have to, re why we're going to repeat this work by ourselves in the SNR? Can we offload these type of things to the OpenStack? The, the, the answer definitely yes, right? So then what we did is, yeah, the VM configuration reader is still there because people still submit jobs through SNR, right? People just, just need to describe what kind of requirement they have in their SNR S batch file, and then we will register those kind of uh, requirements into the environment. And then when we launch and then reclaim, we can offload these uh, tasks, like a VM uh, configuration, those kind of things, to the OpenStack infrastructure. So for example, we can use PCI uh, whitelist to pass through the free VF to the first function, and we can extend Nova to uh, like uh, management the Avishman uh, devices. So with this, we actually uh, can run our stuff on top of third, uh, 
easily. So there's a lot, there's different kind of schemes or different kind of scenarios to run uh, MPA applications or HP, HPC application on top of HPC Cloud. One way is you ex exclusively get a set of nodes, we call it exclusive allocation. Okay, you get a set of, a set of nodes just for you. And then you run your job sequentially. sequentially. That's very straightforward. And then we see our performance in near native. That's what I have been present for, for, for forever. And the second, second, second scenario is that you get allocation, but you share the host, right? share the host allocations. And then you also run your jobs concurrently. Okay, there's a, there are multiple jobs, jobs running there. Okay, and also this, some of your virtual machine may, may run in on top of some nodes, which also shared by the other user. So we call it shared host allocation. So with our, with our design, because we have good isolation and in SRV and Avishman, so there's no, so first of all, functionality-wise, is, is correct. There's no problems there. And then for performance side, we can also achieve to near, near native performance with our design. And then, and then the third scenario is that you still get the exclusive, uh, exclusive allocation of the nodes, but you're still running your jobs concurrently because you may have a lot of jobs to run. And in that case, our uh, solution can also support and everything looks very uh, good. For example, the performance also near native. So with all of these things, we, another, another thing we are trying to do is, can we make them together and package them well so that the people can use our solutions easily? So thanks to OpenStack again, so for example, OpenStack give you heat uh, component with which you can develop some template to wrap your stack or wrap all these kind of things together. And then you just share your template file and then everybody just get this template file they can run on all kinds of open stack based cloud. So with these, these kind of things, we wrap everything together and then we develop two uh, uh, appliances. One is running MPI on bare metal environment, one is running MPI on SRV based KVM environment. So these two appliances are actually uh, ready and uh, we registered or shared through Kemini Cloud, which is open stack based clouds supported by NSF. So uh, we, what we did in the heat, heat uh, template is that, first of all, you need to load VM config, allocate ports, allocate floating IPs, generate SSD key pairs, and launch VMs, attach the SRV device, hot plug efficient device, and then download and install our library, and also uh, populate all this VM IP, those kind of emissions across the nodes, and there's a, a, a associate assign the floating IP to some nodes. Okay, so a lot of steps. We just make all these things automatically uh, handled through the OpenStack heat template. So that will reduce a lot of time for you to deploy HPC Cloud on top of your infrastructure. Okay, so with this, let me uh, conclude my talk. So in, in the whole talk, we are trying to give give you this type of information. First of all, mrp 2 m world library over SRV enabled Infinity Band is an efficient approach to, be, to build HPC clouds. More spe specifically, we propose different kind of uh, designs. The first thing is we can run stand in a standalone manner. You can run our library on virtual machine with SRV. You can also run it on top of OpenStack based cloud. You can run with SNR based cloud. You can run SNR plus OpenStack based cloud, any of them. And also we support, one another important thing is we support virtual machine migration with SRV enabled Infinity Band devices. Not only Infinity Band, we, believe, we also can support the Rocky, those kind of things. I said that this is, this is hypervisor, guest OS, driver independent solutions. We, we also, currently I didn't see any out of box solutions which can support you do migration on top of SRV devices. I believe we will be the first one in the community so that people can use it. And uh, we support both virtual machine container in container Docker and Singularity and the nested virtualization environment. Okay, all these type of things. We see fairly little overhead with virtualization, near native performance at the application level, not only point point benchmark or collective benchmark. You run this application graph or NAS, you can see near native performance and much better than Amazon EC2. Actually, we take some numbers on EC2. Because EC2 is, trying to, is using the 10 gig Ethernet, I believe, the performance is suck, sucks. MRV2 World is available for uh, building HPC clouds. You can uh, use it for free. You can download it, just uh, run on top of your uh, environment. 
And one more important thing is we have a lot, we have developed some appliances, so you can run our library easily, deploy them very easy. And then for future release, we are trying to support the MPI jobs in VMs or containers with Snern, and also the uh, migration support, we are gradually uh, making them available, and also GPU, GPU aware uh, virtualization. Uh, we have something internally we will, we will share maybe next year in the OpenStack uh, Summit. With this, let me thank all the sponsors to uh, our work, and these are all the uh, heroes behind our works. So they have been working on these things very hard. Uh, so let's thank, thank them publicly. And then, thank you. With this, I'm very happy to answer any questions. Thanks a lot.